Good morning, boys and girls. This is Mr. Tima, and I'm here with Buddy to say hi and uh, tell everybody that we miss you. We're going to do another book read this morning, and it is called The Greedy Triangle. A little math in here. I'm uh, excited about this. Buddy's going to say goodbye, and we're going to get started again with The Greedy Triangle, written by Marilyn Burns. All right, again, hope everybody's doing great. Here we go. This was illustrated by Gordon Silveria. All right, here we go. Let's make sure we're in the frame here once. There was a triangle that was, as most triangles are, always busy. The triangle spent its time holding up roofs, supporting bridges, making music in a symphony orchestra, catching the wind for sailboats, being slices of pie and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. The triangle's favorite thing, however, was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. The triangle's friends liked hearing the news. One day, the triangle began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the triangle went to see the local shapeshifter. How may I help you? The shapeshifter asked the triangle. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the triangle, my life would be more interesting. That is easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the triangle into a quadrilateral. Life changed in a wonderful way. The quadrilateral was happy with all the new things it could do. The quadrilateral could be a baseball diamond, or first, second, or third base. It could take a position on a checkerboard or a chessboard. It could be a television screen, a computer screen, or a movie screen. It could frame windows or frame pictures and much, much more. The quadrilateral's favorite thing, however, was to be the pages of a book. I learned so many interesting stories that way, it said, which I can tell my friends. The quadrilateral's friends liked hearing all of the stories. But one day, the quadrilateral began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the quadrilateral went back to the shapeshifter. How may I help you now? The shapeshifter asked the quadrilateral. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the quadrilateral, my life would be more interesting. That is easy to do, said the shapeshifter, and poof! The shapeshifter turned the quadrilateral into a pentagon. Life changed in a wonderful way. The pentagon was happy with all the new things it could do. On a baseball diamond, the pentagon could be home plate. It could be a section on a soccer ball or appear inside whenever somebody drew a five-pointed star. The Pentagon's favorite thing, however, was to be the headquarters of the United States military near Washington, DC. I hear all the top secrets that way, it said. It's too bad I can't tell my friends. The Pentagon's friends couldn't help feeling left out. After a while, time seemed to pass slowly for the Pentagon, and it became dissatisfied with, all, with doing all of the same old things. There must be more to life, so the Pentagon went back to the shapeshifter. So, you're here again, the shapeshifter said to the Pentagon. Now what would you like? I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the Pentagon, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the pentagon into a hexagon. 
Life changed again in a wonderful way. The hexagon was happy with all the new things it could do. The hexagon fit in its fit in as floor tiles in houses and patios and fancy crackers at parties and picnics. It worked as the socket of certain bolts and the prongs of certain wrenches. The hexagon's favorite thing, however, was to be in a, a cell in a beehive. I love watching the bees as they buzz in and out, it said. The hexagon spent so much time in the beehive, it was too busy to talk to its friends. The friends missed the hexagon and couldn't help feeling ignored. Again and again, the shape became restless, dissatisfied, and unhappy with its life. Again and again, it returned to the shapeshifter for more sides and more angles. The shapeshifter agreed to turn it into one shape after another. A heptagon, an octagon, a nonagon, a decagon, and on and on. Finally, the shape had so many sides, many, many sides, and many, many angles. Its sides were so small that it had trouble keeping its balance. Its friends couldn't tell which side it was on and began to avoid the shape. <laughs> One day when the shape was going down a hill, it began to roll. Faster and faster it went, screeching around corners, crashing into fences and trees, colliding with bicycles and terrifying walkers. At last, the shape came to a stop. It felt tired and dizzy, lonely and sad. Enough, thought the shape. I don't know which side is up. I can't keep my balance. My friends don't want me around. The shape could no longer remember why it had been so happy as a triangle. Very carefully, it made its way back to the shapeshifter. Aren't you happy yet? The shapeshifter asked. I want to be a triangle again, said the shape. I'm not surprised, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the shape back into a triangle. The triangle was delighted to have its old shape back, back again and kept itself very busy. Once again, it held up roofs, supported bridges, made music in the symphony orchestra, caught the wind for sailboats, became slices of pie and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. Still, the triangle's favorite thing was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. Its friends liked hearing the news and were glad the triangle was back into shape again. The end. Hope you enjoyed this book read. Uh, we miss you. We love you. And we'll see you soon. Bye.